never happened to any of us when the Lord came. Turn your Bible to Luke, the book of Luke chapter 2. You know, I forgot to mention a minute ago, uh, this Saturday's prayed, isn't it? This coming Saturday, and it's at 4 o'clock, I understand. We want all the youth choir to be here by 3 o'clock Saturday. Saturday afternoon, 3 o'clock. On all of you that can. Boys, girls, teenagers, uh, we're going to have a float down the street for Christmas parade and try to be a witness for the Lord. We usually attack from the outside. And we're going to try to come in from the inside this year, from the outside too, probably. But anyway, I uh, want you to be sure and be here. And then, of course, on Friday night and Saturday night will be the evangelistic services at the uh, East McDowell Junior High Auditorium. Uh, Brother Keith and Brother Mike. And, uh, you know, we're planning on uh, uh, seeing souls saved and maybe lives changed. That'll be Friday night and Saturday night. And so let's really be praying. We want all you young people to invite your friends from school. And I believe that God could use you to reach some of your friends for Jesus. You can get somebody to come to church that I couldn't. Or maybe one of these other preachers couldn't. So do what you can to get them in. And uh, the Lord will save them, get a hold of them. And, of course, we'll be talking more about that tonight, but let's really be praying for it. God will move in do what needs to be done. Luke chapter 2. I want to read you very familiar scripture here. And this you hear this on radio, on television, everything this time of year. And I want to read it. Uh, the Lord's been putting His thought on my heart, and I brought a message on this line last year, but it's come on my heart strong, been thinking about it all week, and thought thought that I need it need to be uh, at least partly repeated and help set us straight in this crazy mixed up world that we're living in. In Luke chapter two, verse one, and it came to pass in those days. I like that, don't you? I love it when the Bible says and it came to pass. There's just something about that. Seems like every time God says something, it came to pass. Have you ever noticed it? Don't ever say it didn't come to pass. It always says, and it came to pass. Uh, and it came to pass. And you, you can feel it coming on when it's going to say that. Everything God says comes to pass. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Notice that when the Lord came the first time, the thing that the economics were in bad shape and they were taxing, taxing, taxing. I believe that's also a sign of His second coming. Matter of fact, the, the Word of God tells us about uh, in the last days, the Antichrist and things will be happening to be a, uh, raising taxes and taxing people. To, uh, they, nowadays, brother, you can't do nothing without being taxed. And what we've done, we robbed God so long as a nation... That the Lord says, all right, if you ain't going to put it in the offering willingly, I'll just get it in taxes and doctor bills and pollution bills and, and uh, nuclear arms and wars. If you don't give it to me one way, I'll get it another way. And they said, if you, uh, if you uh, drive a car, I'll tax the street. If you try to sit, I'll tax your seat. If you try to walk, I'll tax your feet. And, and if you uh, 
I forgot the rest of it. But anyway, it goes on like that. And it starts talking about tax, tax, tax. All the world should be taxed. Verse 2. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. That meant she's about ready to have a baby. Verse 6, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Verse 13, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. Well, it looks like there's just that angel there speaking, and then when he said that last word, all of a sudden there's a big choir of angels. And you know what they're doing? Praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will to men. I'm not going to preach on this, but look at verse 14. On stamps and on little cards that people send out and write it on the window. You know what they put? Peace on earth, good will to man. Notice how they just sliced that verse right in two. They left off the glory to God in the highest. There will never be any peace on this earth until there's glory to God in the highest. Amen. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David, brother, and he's going to reign in Jerusalem, and then there'll be glory to God in the highest peace on earth, good will to men. But you can forget the peace on earth until we start giving God the glory. All right, I want to preach to you this morning. You say, well, Brother Danny, it's at Christmas time of year. Yeah, I want to preach to you on this subject this morning. I'm dreaming of a right Christmas. Let's bow our heads while we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day. God, I'm glad we're alive. I'm glad, Lord, that we're saved by your grace. I'm glad you give us a Bible we can believe in, depend on, and instruct us. I'm glad, Lord, you've given us a place to come and worship. Dear God, we know that your word instructs us in all things. And even in this matter of these holidays and things like that, Lord, your word's still the final authority in all matters of faith and practice for us who are your children. Now, dear Lord, tonight, this morning we pray that you would cleanse our minds and our hearts and our thoughts from anything that would hinder this service. If there's anybody in, this, in these seats who's got things in their heart that ain't right, God, move it out. I pray, Lord, that your spirit may move. And Lord Jesus, may our preeminence in this service today save souls, change lives, do what needs to be done. We'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm preaching to you this morning on the subject, I'm dreaming of a right Christmas. I believe in the right kind of a Christmas. I have uh, brothers in the Lord, that, and, they, and they're almost like Jehovah's Witnesses on this subject. When they get to the place where they think it would even be a sin uh, to buy anybody a gift or to wrap it up. And personally, I've always thought that was a real blessing. And I don't go along with a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, how I feel about Christmas. I've preached it to you ever since I've been here. i preach it the same way ever since this church has been. I think that uh, Christmas, a lot of Christmas is nothing more than a mock 
mockery to the name of the Lord. I think all the partying, the drinking, the gambling, the cussing, and the, the dis disrespect and the blasphemy of the name of the Lord and calling it a religious holiday is a shame and an absolute disgrace. But I also believe that there's nothing wrong with you and I as God's people just thanking the Lord and celebrating Him giving us His Son and Him coming and being born on this earth. There's nothing in the Bible that would prevent us from just setting aside a time and just saying, Lord, we thank You that Your Son was born in Bethlehem. There ain't nothing wrong with that at all. As a matter of fact, it would do us all good if we were a lot more thankful that that little baby was born in Bethlehem. Him. So when you hear them Christmas songs playing on the radio and you hear them out and shopping in public, uh, try, try to take the, the attitude of, uh, and, instead of let's just say, oh, these, just, these wicked people, they're not honoring the Lord. Let's just forget them. They ain't going to honor the Lord no way. And you'll say, glory to God, silent night, holy night. He was born. He did come. And I'm glad our Savior was born in that manger. Ain't you? And if I want to give Brother Dale a gift, I don't, but if I wanted to, and I want to say, Brother Dale, no, I'm a, I'm a, he needs some thoughts or something to keep warm down here. But anyway, you know what? If I was to say, Brother Dale, I want to give you a gift. And I say, I, I, I'm not going to lie up here in the pulpit. I just preached on that last Sunday night. We've, uh, well, I'm going to get him something. But anyway, I don't want to, though. And, and you know something, brother? I, I did want to, but uh, why did I preach on that last Sunday night? Okay, I'll give him a pen. Listen, if I'm going to say, Brother Dale, I'm going to give you a gift. And he's going to say, why are you going to give me a gift? And I said, I don't know. God's been so good to me. He let His Son come down here. Thanks be unto God for His own I just want to give you something because He gave me something. That's right. That's right. And, brother, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. No, sir. I, you won't hurt. If you give me a gift, you will not hurt my feelings a bit. I, you're not going to make me mad. I'm not going to cuss you out. Uh, I, I'll, I'll just... I'll just Take it in the right spirit. But I want you to know, brother, there's nothing wrong with that. Really, there's not. Now, if you get caught up in this mad rat race, and you say, well, what's he going to How much he going to spend on me? I ain't going to spend that much on him. I'm a, I'm a, and, and get mad because you don't, you're, you just missed it all together. You missed it all together, and the Lord's not honored on it. I want to tell you this morning how you can have a right Christmas. Amen? You want to have a right one? Wouldn't it be a blessing, boy, just to have a glorious Christmas season? And boy, be with the family, and things be wonderful. I mean, sitting around in the house, you know, and maybe maybe read this scripture that I've read and get the kids around the table. Boy, that's my idea of a right Christmas. Amen? I don't believe it has to be December to do that, but I tell you, there's nothing wrong with doing it when you do it for the glory of God. Let me say several things this morning. First of all, you're going to have to have the right greetings. You're going to have to have the right greetings. Everywhere you look, season's greetings. And you got this broken holly, you know, and Pencil all around it. Seasons greetings. You're going to have to have the right greetings. You know what the right greetings are? It's when the angel who was up in heaven, who got his calling direct from the throne of God, who got his education around the altar in the third heaven, who got a burning coal of a sermon off of the from the tongues of God and used the crowd for his pulpit and a bunch of little shepherds outside on the Judean hillside for his congregation. And he stood up and he said, Behold, I bring good tidings. Good tidings. That's the right greeting, brother. Of great joy. You know what he said? I ain't just bringing you some news. I'm bringing you good news. Good news. Good news. The Savior's come. Good news. The baby's born. Good news. The Lord come from glory. Good news. There's a Savior born. This day in the city of David, which shall be he called Christ the Lord. Brother, he's for everybody. I thank God that day that old preacher had the right greetings. That angel come down, brother, and he preached that message. And I want you to know, he, he sent him a Christmas card. It wouldn't quit, brother. He'd say, guess what, boys? The Lord sent his son from heaven. Jesus Christ is going to be crucified and bear your sins to keep you out of hell. You know, they said the president... Oh, the United States had the longest Christmas card list of uh, about anybody, I reckon. His Christmas card list is 40,000. Ronald Reagan has sent out 40,000 cards, and that ain't even, he ain't even sending us one. 
40,000 Christmas cards every season. Wouldn't it be something if our president, he might do it, I don't know, but I doubt it. And wouldn't it be something if he put on there, the whole good tidings of great joy. Jesus come. Jesus can save your soul. The Lord can change your life. He didn't stay a little baby, rolled up, died on the cross, rose from the dead. He's coming back again. Boy, I wish Ronald would put that on all his Christmas cards. You want to have a right Christmas, you need to have the right greetings. I believe it ought to be something about, uh, you know what, uh, I don't even like, I personally don't even like the word Christmas. It's called, it's called, because that's a Christ mass. As far as they, they want to leave out the Christ and put an X there and make a mass. They ought to cross out the mass, if anything, and just say it's Christ. And brother, I want to send you some for Christ's birthday and in honor of Him and give you a gift for the glory of God. How, uh, here's what you ought to do when you're downtown doing your shopping. Have the right greetings. And somebody comes in and you buy something at Belts and, and they're nice to you. They ought to be nice to you. They're taking half of your payday and three-fourths of it sometime. And of course they're nice to you. And, and they'll, say, they'll say, Merry Christmas. Here's what you say. You don't just say Merry Christmas. Give them the right greeting. Say, have a spirit-filled Christmas and a joyous, prosperous, soul-winning New Year. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a blessing? And they say, oh, but, 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 sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, you love Jesus, don't you? Surely you ought to go out and miss all winter in the new year. Have a joyous, spirit-filled Christmas and a prosperous soul in the new year, brother. Amen. We ought to have the right greetings. We ought to have the right greeting. Surely they wouldn't be a Christian that would put Xmas up on a on his window. Something like, Lord, help. I mean, folks, I tell you, brother, we ought to have the right greeting. Nothing wrong with Christmas, but we ought to have the right kind of a Christmas. Then the second thing I want to say, I could say a lot there, but I want uh, I guess I I, I want to say that I want to move on. Number two, you got to have the right music. Amen. You know, Christian is a time. The Bible said in Luke chapter 2, and suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying. Now, that verse don't say they were singing. They might have just sing, said, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. That very well may have been. But they might have been singing it too. I don't know. It just, it just says they were saying it. But there's other places in the Bible where they would where they would have some singing along. Now, I believe if you're going to have a right Christmas this year, you ought to have the right music. There's three things, four things I want to say about the right kind of Christmas music. Number one, it ought to be music that'll praise God. And suddenly there was a multitude saying, "Glory to God!" Any music that will not Praise God is not right Christmas music. I mean, brother, they were... Can you... Uh, just imagine. Now, in your imagination, you're going to have to help me imagine this morning or you'll miss the point of the message. Here we are. We're out on the Judean hillside. And there's the shepherds. And they're down here on the side of the hill. And up here's the angel. And all of a sudden, this angel appears to them. And boy, they get scared. He says, Fear not. For behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And all those shepherds go... Phew. Good night, there's an angel. What about that? And boy, about something start getting all around together. And then that boy, they do like this, you know, while that angel's talking to them. And about that time, there's about a thousand of them. And boy, the night is dark. And the stars are shining. And boy, everything up, and you can see the moon maybe over there and these bright stars. And there's a thousand angels up in the sky. And boy, they're looking up like this. And all of a sudden, the, the choir leader turns around and says, All right, all you angels, hey! Here we go! And every one of them starts going, Rudolph the red nose reindeer. <laughs> no! They wouldn't do that, would they? Had a very shiny. No! Those, hey, man! Hey, angels up in the sky, brother! Shiny nose, your foot. No! You've got to have the right music! And I'm just getting started, so hold your seatbelts. Angel, would you lead the choir in the next song? Yes. He comes to the microphone. This angel comes along, he said. Here comes the angel and says, I saw mommy kissing sad. No, no way, brother. No way. 
You didn't see mommy kissing no Santa Claus. And if you did, you ought to shot mommy instead of him. Because I, they say that's supposed to be, you know, daddy sneaking in and all this stuff, you know, and everything. And I don't see no brother. That ain't the right kind of Christian music. That ain't, that ain't the right Christmas. Every year at Christmas, people used to sing. They play on the radio. Oh, Elvis. Or they won't let him alone, will they? Here he comes. I ain't gonna do it like Oh, <laughs> And you know, we used to, uh, and all those people, do, 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 do. I ain't got a thing to do with Jesus. I ain't got a thing in the world to do with the Lord. I ain't got nothing to do with the Savior that come from glory to be born for our sin. You want to have the right Christmas? Have some right music. Imagine a bunch of angles going, like, I don't know, for Christmas is my turn. Like, no way, brother. No way. Hey, so where did all this junk come from? I tell you, brother, I don't want to be a, I'm not, a, I'm not consider myself overboard. I don't think it's wrong to sell, sell a, have a, a get together and give gifts to the family and, and, uh, but I tell you, man, we got so far away from, I, I don't believe the Lord appreciates that junk. Man, was out of place, there's a ham sandwich at a Jewish feast. <laughs> they don't even pet. He ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. <laughs> it ought to be song to welcome the king. I like Hark Harold Angels sing. I always have liked that song. Glory to, you know, the newborn king, man. I mean, that's good. It ought to be the right music that will welcome the king. That will welcome the king. You know why? Because little people, little kids, they get the impression that Christmas ain't Jesus, it's Santa Claus. And you mentioned Christmas around most kids. They don't think of Jesus. They think of ho-ho. They asked a little old boy up in Michigan. Somebody told me up there the other day. said, ask this little old boy. They said, now, son, said, which is, which, if you had to give up one of them, which would you give up, Jesus or Santa Claus? And they said, that little old boy thought, and he thought, and he thought. He said, that's a hard question. And he thought, and he thought, and he thought, and he finally said, I guess Jesus. Now, you know what made that little kid think like that? Bunch of old backslid moms and daddies. Amen. You know, we told our kids here all down through the years that there's no such thing as a little a little fat boy that flies through the air and all that stuff. Hey man, mom and daddy will get you something. I, mean, I ain't gonna buy my kids something and then let somebody else get the credit for it. I hope my little girl say, thank you, Daddy. I appreciate that. And they don't care. They don't care where it comes from as long as they get it. Don't lie to them. Amen. 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 You say, you mean you don't believe in Santa Claus? You mean you do? Yeah. You know what somebody said one time? Somebody said, where's a call? Because I, I said there wasn't no Santa Claus. <laughs> hey, brother, if telling the truth makes you call, so be it. It ought to welcome the king. Then it ought to welcome a baby. I believe in them songs about a mother and a baby. Mother over the crib. You know, wonder who started this thing. All you mamas. You get that little baby in there and it's maybe a coughing or a crying a little bit. And you'll rock it and you'll say, Lullaby. You know, good night. You know, or, uh, you know what's the mother little songs you sing? Uh, yeah, rock about baby. All that stuff. You just rock and rock and sing to it. Wonder how that got started. I don't really know. But I tell you, boy, don't you reckon Mary? Glory to God. <laughs> oh, wonder what she felt like when she picked up Jesus. Had him laying in her arms. Woo! And she looked at him. Boy, she just went like this. Boy, she started rocking the Lord. She might have sung Silent Night. Mary didn't sing Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell Rock. Jingle Bell. No! She sung Silent Night. Holy Night! Holy Night! Lord, help. Amen. 
I have one, I have one last year. The chipmunks, brother. And the chip. We can hardly stand to wait. You ever heard that? Mary. You imagine Mary and Joseph. I'm not trying to be sacrilegious, brother. I'm just trying to say, look how far we've gone. Look how far we've You can't imagine that at the nativity. You've heard the latest, haven't you? Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Son, that's as biblical as you can get, brother. So I, one of the girls wrote me the words down here. Grandma got run over by a reindeer walking home from our house Christmas Eve. Well, you can say there's no such thing as Santa, but as for me and Grandma, we believe. She'd been drinking too much eggnog. And we begged her not to go. But she forgot her medication and staggered out the door into the snow. When we found her Christmas morning at the scene of the attack, she had hoof prints on her forehead and incriminating claw marks on her back. My soul. And it talks about Grandma, Grandpa's taking it pretty good. He's in there drinking beer. Now the goose is on the table, and the pudding made up big. And the can silver candles that would have matched the hair of Grandma's wig. It's not Christmas without Grandma and all the family dressed in black. We just can't help but wonder, should we open up her gifts or send them back? That aren't, that's not the right, the right kind of music. Why not? Why not? The Hallelujah Chorus. Amen. And He shall reign forever. Amen, brother. Amen. You want to have the right Christmas? Have the right music. Amen. Then let me say thoroughly, right quickly, we ought to have the right spirit. The right spirit. What is the right spirit? Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The right spirit is, brother, we ought to have peace with God. The angel said, uh, peace on earth, good will to man. There will never be complete peace on this earth, but a man, an individual man can have peace, can have that peace of the Lord. When you think of a lot of people out there, when you mention Christmas, they don't think, oh, it's a glorious time, the time we think about Christ coming to the world. They don't think about that. They think, boy, I'm going to tie one on this week. Wrong spirit. Not fussing with brothers and sisters over the gifts and mad because you didn't get what you wanted and, and, and getting mad at your mom and daddy because they've done the best they could and they've worked and tried to buy you something. Some of you kids will snub up and get mad, throw your toys down. I don't want this. Man, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. In, instead of griping about what's in our stockings, we ought to be thankful God's filling up our stockings with feet every morning. And then you ought to have the right gift. What is the right gift? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave. He gave. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. The greatest gift that's ever been given was when she brought forth her firstborn son. You know what she done with the first thing she done? Wrapped him. Amen. Wrapped him. Somebody said, I'm going to go buy my wife something. You know, I want to have it wrapped. Why? Because when the greatest skip is ever done, first things he done, wrapped him up in those grave clothes. Because he was born to come and die. Man, I want you to know she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. You know, I'm glad the Lord wasn't born up in Caesar's palace or in some big big shot. That would have made us feel like, well, if you're not high society and you're not educated or you're not rich, that it wasn't for you. He was born in a lowly stable. And she wrapped him in swallowing clothes and laid him in a manger. Somebody said, I ain't going to get nothing for Christmas. Oh, brother, the greatest gift anybody could ever get, you can have. You can have. God wants to give you eternal life. The Lord wants to give you something that will change you and you'll never be the same. If you're here this morning and you're, saying, you're feeling sorry for yourself and you're thinking, well, I ain't going to get nothing this year. The Lord wants to give you something nobody could give you. Any, anything to compare with what the Lord wants to give you. 
The best gift is not a Cabbage Patch doll, Captain Grayskull, Barbie and Ken. You know, I read up there not long ago, I read just the other day in the newspaper, that on Wall Street in New York, they're making these special, I think it's some kind of a, maybe a limited edition of a Rolls Royce, sell for something like $170,000. And they sell them things just like that at Christmas time. People go out and buy their, their wife or their shack up or their, or their fiancé a $170,000 car. Just like it wasn't nothing. Now, I'll tell you something, brother. I mean, you know, if you, if, if, if I'd, I'd like, I'd like to buy and buy wife a new car. I'd like to buy brother Dale a new car. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying that's not the greatest gift. That is not the greatest gift. The greatest gift is God giving us His Son. Notice here also, they gave gifts to Him instead of each other. I believe, I believe, you know who ought to get you, you your good gift, your first gift? The Lord. You say, what can I give Him? Yourself. That's what He wants. You say, well, I'll give a good Christmas offering. That ain't what He wants. He wants you. He wants you. He wants you. How would you feel if it was your birthday? And a bunch of people had a big party and didn't even invite you and gave gifts to each other and ignored you and never even spoke to you. Suppose it were your birthday and all your friends would come and gather around your fireplace there in your happy home. They come with smiles and gladness and bring their presents too. But when they start to share, there's not a one for you. They give them to each other a grand and costly lot, but for the guest of honor, they somehow just forgot. You say such things don't happen, nor should it ever be. It seems too crude and cruel for folks like you and me. But friend, have you considered... This just is what men do, not, of course, to humans, but of our Lord is true. We celebrate His birthday with all our pomp and style and give to one another and grieve Him all the while. It is Christ we claim to honor at this Christmas time. Don't spend on friends the dollars and just give Him a dime. To give to one another indeed is very nice, but best of all to Jesus, for Him let's sacrifice. His cause too long has suffered. By thoughtless, selfish men, let's bring to Christ the first fruits and give our best to Him. The kings there brought Him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Gold to represent the three parts of His life. Gold represented His deity, that He was a king. Frankincense represented uh, the, the incense going up and that He also held the office of priest and their intercessor. And then myrrh, that bitter perfume, represented his mold as a prophet and the suffering and the bitterness of prophet, priest, and king. Right gift. Then, number five, the right invitation to accept. Let me give you the right invitation to accept the gift. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All you got to do is come and get it. Come and get it. I think it's a, I think it's a wicked crying shame that the ACL, LU, and Madeline Mary O'Hara and people like that are putting the pressure on our government to take down crosses and manger scenes. Now, let me tell you something, brother. Those, those crosses and those manger scenes, those donkeys, those mangers, those lambs, the, those nativity scenes are what our Christmas is supposedly all about. And if you took them out, there wouldn't be any reason to celebrate. Wouldn't be nothing to be happy for. Wouldn't be no reason to send gifts if God didn't give us His gift. Wouldn't be no reason to rejoice if there was no hope for us in the future. There would be nothing to live for. We didn't have the invitation to accept. They said a stamp. You know, they sent out different kind of stamps in the season and they rejected it because it had a cross on it. You can put a movie star, you can put a hockey player on there with his hockey stick. You can't put the symbol of the cross. It's a devil. It's a devil. All across America, they've been protesting. Did you know they're trying to even get the songs taken off the radio that mention him? But that's a wicked spirit moving our generation. They don't want Silent Night, Holy Night on the radio. Jingle bells, deck the halls, bows of holly, that's all right. But don't sing about him. 
Without Him, you ain't got nothing to sing about. And then there's the right response when somebody offers you a gift. Somebody says, here, I'd like to give you this for Christmas. You know what you got to do? you got to have the right response. God looked down from heaven, gave a gift, wrapped it up, offered it to you. You know what your response is? Acts 16.31 Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's your part. That's your response. Your response is accept His gift. I never will forget the first Christmas I saved. See, Christmas in my life for 17 years was just a time of, oh well, what am I going to get? And I'd just, you know, try to buy everybody up something just because that was a thing to do. But still, all I can think about, what am I going to get? The first year I got saved. You listening? Now, this may seem a little foolish to some of you now that's been saved a while, but to me it was so real. I got saved. I was 18 years old. And I went to church. And they said, you want to be in the play? And I said, yeah, let's be in the play. And boy, we got in there and we started having that Christmas play, play practice. Honest, folks. We'd meet in there for Christmas play, play practice at Nebo Baptist Church. And they'd practice a song like... Uh, Heart the Herald Angels Sing or something like that. And it go, it'd send goosebumps all over me. It'd bubble up inside of me so bad I'd think, Glory to God. I've heard them songs all my life. This is the first time it ever, it ever meant like what they mean now. Whew. I'd think, my soul. It was a silent night. It was a holy night. Glory to God. The King was... And boy, I tell you, man, I'd like to have a running fit almost. I mean, in Christmas play practice. And boy, we'd, we'd, I, it's just so warm. I never will forget that feeling in that church. It's so warm, so real. And then somebody, I started reading the Bible. Somebody give me that book, uh, that 666 book by Salem Kerbon. He'd just come out then, and he, you know, he wrote a lot of books since then. Somebody said, here, read it. Son, I read that thing and read that thing. It's about the rapture and the mark of the beast and everything. I read that novel. And I, I remember doing that at Christmas time. And I felt so good. I didn't even care about getting a gift. Really. I, I mean, I don't even remember what I got. Uh, I know my family bought something and everything, but I was just, I was, I was just thrilled at being saved. That's a right kind of Christmas, brother. When you can get the old Bible down and read it, not just read it and read it. Boy, at Christmas, you know, you're off work, you got some time, just take a whole evening. Just lay around and read the Bible. Pray. And you can have a right Christmas. And the last thing is the right celebration. Revelation 5.12 said, Worthy is the Lamb. Power, riches, strength, wisdom. What if Jesus Christ came to the average, quote, Christmas party? in America. You saw their Playboy bunnies walking around the ears on the Santa Claus suits on. Watch them pass the liquor and curse and talk filthy. Jesus Christ walked in. That's why really those Christmas parties where you work and stuff, you ain't really got much reason being there unless it's just a witness. I mean, if they're going to fire you or something, go on and tell them about the Lord and just irritate them. But I'll tell you something, brother. Christian has no... I don't see why anybody would want to be around that kind of atmosphere. That ain't the right kind of celebration. Somebody said, you watch. You mark it down. You drive by the, the hell hole right down here on Christmas Eve and see if you, there won't be parking room down there. Buy that liquor! Buy that liquor! Buy that liquor! That ain't the right celebration. People say, oh, I can't, boy, I'm going to have me a good old Christmas drunk. That's the wrong celebration. We ought to celebrate Him. The Bible said in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm dreaming of a right Christmas. I want to have one, don't you? Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. In just a minute, we're going to sing a verse of some invitational hymn. If God is dealing with your heart, 
if God has spoken to your heart this morning. You say, Brother Danny, I did. I don't even. I, I had the whole wrong idea about Christmas, and this morning God spoke to my heart, and here I am claiming to be so spiritual, and all I'm thinking about is buying gifts, and what am I going to get, and what am I going to give, and really I've just left the Lord out completely, and I want to honor Him. I want to have a right Christmas. Maybe somebody here that's never accepted God's gift. You've never been saved. You may be here this morning and you've been to church all of your life. Maybe you've been a member. Maybe you've been baptized. You might be a member of this church. You might be a member of another church. But you've never really accepted God's gift. We're going to pray this morning and give you an opportunity to come to the altar and get the greatest gift anyone ever got when God gave His Son. Dear Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit would take these few thoughts and somehow use them to help somebody. Oh, God, we pray. Help that man, that woman, that boy or girl who needs to come to the altar. Get their life straightened out with you. Help them to come right now. We ask in Jesus' name and for His sake.